So I've been tasked to talk about like five things that the left should be focusing on over the next five years, given that we actually like literally might be in power pretty soon, um, which is very exciting. Um, so I just wanted us to all like cast our minds back to when Corbyn first announced that he was running to be leader of the Labour Party and how ridiculed and patronized and just like out of this world that what now feels like such an inevitable step, how it felt at the time and how, you know, even for me, like I kind of consider myself sort of vaguely, you know, optimistic or like invested in movement building and, you know, like believing in what people can achieve. But even when I was like, bitch please, like there is no way, like it just seemed like a joke, but, the left in the UK kind of saw that challenge and we did something that we actually rarely do in history, which is rather than kind of, you know, prematurely admitting defeat, wallowing in, you know, kind of dourness and, you know, going on a really long march that ended um, with a speech by Lindsay German and then going home in the rain and just feeling like beyond shit. Um, we actually decided to believe in the possibility of a radical step forward and to believe in the possibility of what we were told was impossible. And we threw our weight behind something that wasn't just about defending, it wasn't just about defending things like the NHS and, and you know all of these kind of things that the Tories are trying to take away from us, but it was actually about proposing something new and it was about believing in something um, hopeful, and I think we got out of this, like, temporarily, we kind of got out of this mindset that the left in the UK has always had, of just this timidness and insecurity about our ideas and our potential power. And quite frankly, um, I think that if we gained anything from Corbyn, we've gained the idea that we actually have so much more latent power than we think we do. Um, so I'm gonna, I've sort of come up with like five vague things about things, like basically things that I think are achievable and things that we should be focusing on in the next five years. And I, it's gonna sound really grim and basically the theme is like, disaster is coming and we need to like be ready for it. But I want you to retain that hope that I was talking about before, about this idea that we always do better when we behave more boldly than we believe we're allowed to essentially. Um, so, the first thing, and Ash touched on this before, um, we can absolutely end detention in the next five years. <laughs> absolutely. The movement to end detention has done an incredible job um, over the past few years, and as far as I'm concerned, that should be day one of a Corbyn government. It's closed down all detention centres. <laughs> We also, but what we can also do is start to, because, and I did, you know, no borders is like what gets me, you know, horny. So it's what I think about a lot. <laughs> and basically, we're not gonna be able to get rid of borders overnight, but what I can see a Corbyn government doing really brilliantly is slowly defunding and just like gutting the border regime of its power. So we need to essentially do what the right has been doing to our institutions, our education, our healthcare, our youth services, and just slowly defang it of its power. Cripple it, get rid of its resources, and from you know the Home Office to the UK Border Agency, we have the power to basically slowly starve these oppressive institutions of their power. My second thing, this is something we don't talk about on the left enough, enough, childcare. The situation of children in this country, children are getting fucking rickets. Like we're in a Dickens novel. Like the, like it's a quiet scandal happening. And I think a big reason why no one takes any notice of it is because it's largely women, it's teachers, it's mothers, it's nurses, like these are the people who are having to pick up the slack of the fact that our children's services have been so crippled. So I think filling in that social reproductive gap and using it as a political space is something that we absolutely can be doing in the next five years. Thirdly, getting into schools. 
So I come from a background of decolonizing education, and I always thought about how I never understood why we always stay in universities. Firstly, loads of people don't go to uni. Like, university educated people is not a very big segment of the population. Secondly, School kids are super radical, they're super energetic, and they're super open to ideas, and they've got a bunch, a bunch of energy, and that's why a lot of the time they feel very like weird about the world they're going into, and they kind of know something isn't quite right, and that combined with energy is why they're doing weird things like eating Tide Pods and snorting condoms on YouTube. <laughs> Um, so we need to take that energy and engage them as political subjects because they are, they have a political consciousness. And I don't mean in a didactic, like weird Stalinist way. I mean actually engage them as like genuine political subjects, engage, teach them about the activist history globally um, and, t and give them the tools and the understanding, the historical knowledge to understand that they can affect social change. Yeah. Yeah. Number four. We need to build infrastructure outside the Labour Party. So as much as the Labour Party is a site of hope for people, every all of you guys who are involved in campaigns, in media, in any organisation, you need to have a game plan if call, the whole Corbyn pro project goes tits up. So there's a lot of people out there with a lot of power that are going to try and strangle it. So we need to have a game plan so that the horns of crisis are not taken by the right if that's how stuff goes, which to be honest, it's kind of looking that way. And fifth, we need to get ready for the fact that there's a lot of people out there that are ramping up for war. With Trump pulling out of the Iran um, deal, with you know all of these kind of with mad men like Bolton in the White House right now, we need to make sure that we are ready for the fact that there are people there looking to get an Iraq Mark II. We can't do what we did last time. We can't just wait for it to kind of overwhelm us and again go on a fucking march that's ended by Lindsay Chairman. And I think that that's what's going to help, you know, prevent a catastrophic war. So not to end this on a really gloomy note, but war is coming and we need to be ready. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so as grim as that might sound, I want you to take you back to that hope and that feeling of like, feeling that everyone was laughing at us and we ignored them and went into the communities and organized and we achieved what we were told is unachievable. So always be bolder than you're told you can be, always be bolder than you think you can be, and I absolutely believe that we have so much unlocked power in this country, we just have the bravery to fucking go for it. <laughs> Yeah.